And we continue to follow that big breaking news tonight out of District 11. Now, freshman Congressman Madison Cawthorn has conceded. That is the breaking news that we are following right now. That's right. Queen City News reporter Derek Dellinger live at what was a Cawthorn watch party in Hendersonville tonight. And Derek, I'm sure a change of mood there. Many surprised that he conceded. What can you tell us? Uh, there was a bit of a surprise that there was a concession. That concession was made about uh, 10 minutes ago. In fact, right around uh, between 10, 15, 10, 10, 20 tonight, we got our uh, spokesperson, the spokesperson for Cawthorn's campaign, basically saying, yeah, he called Chuck Edwards to concede the race and to unite NC-11 basically towards the, uh, the November election. Now, it's important to note here, even just 30 minutes before that, he was expressing a bit of a jovial attitude. He was still hopeful that he could win uh, and it could pull out a victory. Take a listen to what he had to say before that race was called. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for being out here, my friends. The race is very close. Uh, we know that our opponents, uh, most of his state Senate seat has already been reported. Uh, so we're really hopeful that the rest of the votes that are coming in will break our direction. Uh, so it's still to be decided, but my friends, I genuinely believe we will take a victory out there today. Uh, I believe that we will not have a runoff election, and so we should be moving forward to a historic majority to rebuild America and send it back to its former glory. Now, it's important to note that part of what he said there was uniting that uh, the, the NC-11 towards that Republican majority coming up in the House. It, it, it was very vague in that language. He didn't necessarily say that he was going to be eking out a win, even though he said a little bit earlier in that statement that he was hoping for that. Now, it, it's important to note here, part of the reason he felt that way was just because a lot of the precincts hadn't reported yet. The thing about it is a lot have, and there's a simple issue of math. We need to figure out that uh, Clay County and Jackson County are the only ones that have not completely reported. And those are low population counties. So even though he has a lead, say, of, of about 2,000 votes, it is not enough from the, the – there won't be enough votes from that precinct, essentially, to make it go on to those official results, at least as far as the official results that have come in so far from the North Carolina State Board of Elections. Again, everything is not officially official yet, but Queen City News is projecting that Cawthorn did lose his congressional seat tonight, or will be losing his congressional seat. Chuck Edwards will be going up, presumably, against Jasmine Beach Ferreira, who's the uh, Democratic nominee, or likely to be the Democratic nominee, not official yet, but that will be happening coming up a little bit later on this year. That is the story here from Hendersonville. Derek Dellinger, Queen City News. Derek, thank you so much for the update there. Let's bring in Khalif Rhodes to the conversation now, our political expert being here with us tonight. Lots to really kind of break down with this. I mean, first, I think just the news that Madison Cawthorn lost his seat and that he conceded. Uh, I kind of, what do we take from this as to um, voters now saying, hey, this is how we feel? I think the concession is probably a step in the right direction. It's, it's admitting defeat, which for him, I think, leading up into tonight was something that was above him. I, I think he was very confident, mm -hmm. and his confidence sometimes bordered on cockiness. Yeah. And because of that, I think voters spoke to that. I think all of the scandals, the, the cocaine mm -hmm. and the nude pictures, I think he believed that he was ab above the fray. Um, and following more of the Trump bandwagon, even a little bit higher. And I think today was a referendum on that kind of antics from him, at least. And that's one thing that I noticed. I mean, when you heard Cawthorn speak tonight, it, it was a different tone. Of course, you know, it's a lot in conceding, but I think it was more of maturity there that many of us have not seen. Haven't seen that the whole time, and I was happy to hear that. But mm -hmm. I, I can say that he was already vulnerable as a freshman yeah. congressman already. And so if you add those extra scandals, he didn't make it better for himself. And I think his opponent did a good job of trying to stay away from that. Right. Edward said the whole time, I'm not here for the anti. Right. I really want to talk about his record, him not voting, him not really being connected to his district, and I want to do that for my folks. And I think he really did an excellent job of hitting home those points when he could have dug deep into the, the scandals. Right. And I think the voters really, early numbers show that they voted for him. And it really says a lot about the voters, because keep in mind, this is somebody at one point who wanted to be able to switch areas they wanted to represent and then come back to the area of that district. This is somebody whose own political party said they want to distance themselves from Madison Cawthorn. So I think that there's a lot to learn from this of how voters feel. But what happens next? Where does Madison Cawthorn go? Do you think he still has a political future? He has to really take tonight, you know, as a, as a learning lesson. Mm -hmm. And you really can't change who you are internally. So I'm not saying that he has to need, needs to go back and change his core, mm -hmm. but he actually go back and be that person that won by 12 points 
um, in his last election. Mm -hmm. And that was before a lot of the scandal. It was the bravado. It was the confidence. But it wasn't the over un, un, untouchable. Mm -hmm. And I think over the last couple months, he felt that he was untouchable. And if he can roll that back, I think he has a future still. He, he's, he's very committed to his, his, his passion. He's very committed to being there and serving. Mm -hmm. I just think that he needs to remove some of the antics and get back to what got him there a few years ago. Khalif Rhodes, thank you so much. Of course, we're going to check back in with you. Our political expert here inside the studio kind of breaking down all these elections that we're seeing.